This just really annoys me and it's unnecessary scare tactics. That's what it is. Hi, me again, and I stumbled across something in a local paper, and we've talked about it on this channel before, and it really, really, really annoys me. Have a little look at this with me, because it winds me right up. So I found this in the Nutsford Guardian, and apparently Nutsford is just south of Manchester, I've learned today, every day's a school day. Have a look. A man and a woman have been hit with £460 court bills after they were caught using televisions without a TV licence. The cases of Melanie, hidden her surname, and they've put her address on there, so all her neighbours can shame her publicly, and Guy, her partner of another address, were heard at Warrington Magistrates Court on August the 31st. The pair who failed to purchase a TV licence costing £159 had their cases proved in their absence. So can you see why this annoys me? It really annoys me. One, they're printing, which is their right to do, I know that, it's public record, it was in the court, their name and their address. But you don't have to do it in the local paper, right, to publicly shame people in your community. And it says here, the pair failed to purchase a TV license. It just enforces the narrative that you must have one. And you don't, you don't have to have one. So Melanie, aged 40, because that's also important, let's, let's put her age in there as well, was caught between December the 6th and December the 22nd last year, while 32-year-old, her partner's surname, was caught on around January the 10th, 2022. Magistrates fined a pair £220 each for the offence and ordered them to pay 205 in court costs and a £34 victim surcharge. They were given until September the 28th to pay the full balance of £459. So it just winds me up that they print the details and it puts there who failed to purchase a TV licence costing £159. It's enforcing the narrative that everybody must have a television licence. And you don't. You don't. Now, they may very well have been watching something they shouldn't have been watching. I would imagine that's how this all ended up. And uh, how were they caught, I hear you ask? Did a detector van track them down and get them into trouble? No. There's only one possible way this could have happened, and that's when they get a knock on the door from one of the goons, the door-to-door -door salesman from TV licensing, and they talk to them. There is no other way this situation can come about. So if they just heeded my advice, maybe they, well, they obviously don't know my channel exists, do they? But if they heeded the advice that's out there of not talking to these people when they knock on the door, they're not police, they're not bailiffs. They may pretend like they have some kind of powers when they say, I'm going to interview you under caution, or it's all utter nonsense. Go to the TV licensing website and it says there, these people are not police, they're not bailiffs. They have no powers. They have no powers of entry, they have no powers of anything. So if you get one knock on your door, you say no thank you and you close the door, as is your right to do to an unwanted door-to-door -door salesman. And none of this could have happened. This situation, not possible to happen unless they spoke to the TV license enforcement officer. Or maybe they let them into the property, we don't know the whole story. Right, but that is the only way this could happen. So I think the local paper should be ashamed of themselves. It must be a slow news day in Nutsford. And if they want to print that story, print the story. But why do you have to put the full names and the addresses in there? I know it's public record. That doesn't make it right morally, does it? You're publicly shaming people who live in your community, the community this local paper is supposed to serve. And it's not all right. And it's not just me. It's got a few comments on there. And look, uh, John Terry. These foolish people must have let the doorstep goons in to investigate. My advice to anyone in a similar situation is to shut the door in their face. They have about as much power as any cold caller. John Terry may very well be a viewer of this channel, but he is spot on with it. And there is a couple of other comments on there. People calling them chavs and saying they should pay their way. There's no law saying you have to have a television license. And you can own a television without having a television license. It's based on what you use your television to do. So if you watch or record anything that's being broadcast or use iPlayer, yes, you do require a television license. But you can own tellies and you can watch 90% of the stuff you'd watch anyway without having a television license. If you want more information on this, links below down in the, uh, in the description thing of this or hit my name, you know, the little round icon thing. And the first video that will play on my homepage thing will tell you everything you need to know about not getting into this situation and what you can watch without a telly license. You know, I've seen a few of these stories popping up lately in local papers because it's slow news and everything. But a lot of these stories do come from TV licensing PR agencies that work 
with local papers and community outlets and stuff like that to push the narrative. And how can I fight with that? They're paying millions to these PR agencies. I can't fight that. The person writing this could have written it better or couldn't have written it at all and it would have been better. And it just winds me up, just winds me up. Let me know what you think about it as always down in the comments below. And thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because that way hopefully I'll see you in another video again soon, won't I? Ta-da.